And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy Thursday and National Dolphin Day. Really? Is it about pre preservation of, I believe, what's left of the natural habitat? Yeah, okay. uh, protecting dolphins. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, protecting dolphins it is. I'm sure you watched uh, the high stakes TV debate between uh, the former president of the United States, Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Uh, it's front, well, as you can imagine, was, front page news. Well, I have to say it wasn't boring. I watched uh, no. nearly all 100 minutes of it and uh, it was uh, certainly something to grab a bag of popcorn for, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> See, that doesn't necessarily give, I guess, American voters the confidence to better understand either candidate's uh, policy direction. But you're, yes. you're right. There, there was a lot of moments, yeah. memorable moments, which we'll get to in just a moment. All right. Let's start off at home with a cybersecurity summit that took place. Uh, this is our first keyword of the day. That's an interesting ding. Let's try that once more. Our first keyword of the day. There we go. Cyber Summit. So President Yoon has vowed to establish South Korea as a leader in cybersecurity training for the Indo-Pacific region. He was speaking at the Cyber Summit Korea, um, what I believe he wants to host on an annual basis. What else did he have to say? Right. So the event was hosted by the National Intelligence Service and the National Security Research Institute. It focuses on AI, quantum technology and, of course, cybersecurity. Uh, Yoon emphasized that cyberspace has become a critical infrastructure in the digital age, bringing both advantages as well as growing risks. Uh, he expressed concern over cyber threats from hackers and criminals, often, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, supported by authoritarian states. He warned that such attacks on key institutions and infrastructure could seriously threaten national security and public safety. He also pointed out that South Korea has developed strong cybersecurity measures, particularly due to ongoing cyber attacks from North Korea and other hostile forces. Uh, he stressed that Seoul will share its experience and capabilities with the global community to help ensure global safety and prosperity. Uh, he further noted that because cyberspace is instantly connected without physical borders, cyber threats are also a global issue. Uh, he stressed that countries need to collaborate internationally to build active cyber defenses. And he mentioned that South Korea released its national cybersecurity strategy earlier this year, focusing on proactive defenses and strengthening international cooperation. And he added that he hopes the event will develop into a dynamic platform for dialogue and collaboration, bringing together leading experts from around the world to tackle future challenges and strengthen cybersecurity infrastructure. Uh, during the summit, Yoon visited exhibitions showcasing advanced technology and cybersecurity companies, and he also attended briefings observing demonstrations from the NIS on cyber attack de uh, detection mm -hmm. and response processes. And he also attended the first international cyber training or APEX exercise led by South Korea. That was a commitment made during July's NATO summit uh, in Washington. I mean, it's a wide range of topics. I believe they covered at a cybersecurity summit of this scope involving so many countries and so many experts. I mean, for years, it seems we've been talking about election meddling, uh, the spread of fake news, uh, maybe hacking. Uh, it really the list goes on. And it seems that this might be an annual occurrence. Mm -hmm. And that were the biggest takeaways. All right. With that, let's move on to our second keyword of the day. Quota hype stays. So the top office has firmly rejected the medical community's demand to cancel the planned medical school quota hike for the next two years. In fact, the education ministry even stepped in saying that it is unfeasible to scrap the quota hike for next year because admissions process has already begun. What's the latest? Right. So the top office stated that the issue could not be treated like a bargaining chip. It urged the medical community to present a well-founded alternative plan for discussions uh, Tang Sang Yun, a senior secretary for social affairs, said in an interview that the government proposed the 2000 student increase based on scientific evidence after thorough consultation with the medical community. Uh, he added that simply cancelling the decision without proper evidence is not an option. Uh, Tang emphasized that determining the right number of medical professionals involves many variables and must be based on data. And he noted that the government is open to discussions if 
the medical community can present a solid evidence-based alternative plan. Now, regarding the consultative body uh, that's being pushed by the ruling party that will involve political parties and the medical community, Tang mentioned that while the government and parties are ready, the key is the medical community's participation. Some groups have already expressed interest, but uh, the majority of medical and doctors groups are opposed to uh, participating. Uh, he also noted that while efforts are being made to launch the consultative body before the Trusak holiday, the final decision depends on the medical community's response. And he also addressed the controversy surrounding the online blacklist of emergency room doctors, calling it a criminal act. There's been this uh, another blacklist related to the medical community that's uh, kind of leaking personal information mm -hmm. of basically uh, doctors still working in ERs and basically calling them out but not uh, joining these striking doctors. Now, he warned that if doctors are driving away, are driven away, excuse, excuse me, uh, due to these actions, it will ultimately harm the public. Uh, the government has been taking action by referring such cases to the police uh, and will continue to do so. Uh, regarding the deployment of military doctors and public health doctors to address the staff uh, shortage, Chang acknowledged that there have been difficulties, but guidelines are being created to better manage their roles. Uh, medical school admissions for the 2025 academic, uh, academic year are underway and nearly 11 times the number of available spots have been filled with applicants uh, for the early application process uh, at least. Uh, however, due to the increased number of slots this year, the final competition rate is expected to actually be lower mm. uh, than last year. All right, I'll leave it there for now so we can move on to our third keyword of the day. Soul Defense Dialogue. So the Seoul Defense Dialogue kicked off yesterday for a two-day run. It is where top defense officials and security experts gather to discuss regional and global security issues and, of course, uh, challenges. Uh, what did they discuss this year? Right. So this year, there are 900 participants marking the largest turnout ever, actually. Uh, key speakers included Defense Minister Kim Jong-hyun, uh, Canadian Defense Minister Bill Blair and NATO Military Committee Chair Bob Bauer. Uh, Kim emphasized that North Korea's continued nuclear and missile development, along with its growing provocations and cooperation with Russia, pose a major threat to security worldwide. Blair spoke about increasing threats in the Indo-Pacific region, particularly from China and North Korea and outlined Canada's efforts to strengthen its military presence in the region. Bauer pointed out uh, how the war in Ukraine has seriously impacted global security. He urged NATO, South Korea and partner nations to work together to maintain international order. Now, on the margins of the uh, forum, the Defence Ministry hosted a working group session on space security. Participants discussed ways for international cooperation to deal with space-based threats and enhance awareness of uh, the domain. Uh, before the forum, the Defense Ministry actually signed a letter of intent with the U.S. Space Force to, jo uh, to join the Joint uh, Combined Operations, or JCO cell, which monitors enemy reconnaissance satellite activities. Now, 15 countries are actually currently part of this initiative. By joining, South Korea aims to enhance its ability to monitor space threats, mm. ensure stable operations of key assets, and accurately predict the impact areas of possible falling space objects over the Korean Peninsula. All right, and with that, we turn to the economy section for our fourth keyword of the day. Household debt. I guess the big question is what hinders South Korea's economic growth? The Bank for International Settlements has warned that household debt is now holding, bank, uh, holding back Korea's economic growth. In fact, in the past, the debt sometimes helped growth, but now the negative effects are becoming stronger, more prominent. Tell us more. Right. So the Bank of uh, the Bank for International Settlements is basically a Swiss-based uh, consortium of banks. Uh, it pointed out that since the early 2000s, low interest rates have caused private credit to expand in many countries, especially in emerging markets. Now, private credit refers to debt basically from non-financial sectors like households and businesses. In many Asian countries, including China, the ratio of private debt to GDP has more than doubles. Now, while rising debt can improve access to funds and support growth by boosting investment in assets and education, uh, the BIS warns that too much debt can actually start to harm growth. The BIS emphasized that the relationship between debt and growth follows an inverted U-curve. Initially, 
rising debts, uh, rising debt boost growth because basically people they take out debt to basically spend more. But after a certain point, the burden of repaying the debt can weaken uh, the economy. The BIS noted that while many emerging markets still benefit from rising credit, some Asian countries, including Korea and China, have reached a point where rising debt is starting to hurt growth. Now, uh, Korea's private credit to GDP ratio was 222.7% at the end of last year, with household debt marking up uh, about 100.5% 100, 100 of that figure. A corporate debt was at 122%. Uh, odd percent. Now, the VIS also pointed out that as household debt grows, more credit is being funneled into sectors like construction and real estate rather than productive sectors like manufacturing. Uh, the shift can slow down overall economic growth. Uh, the BIS concluded that this inverted U curve isn't fixed. Uh, the negative impact of too much debt on growth can be reduced with the right policies. For example, making sure credit flows into more productive areas, growing the role of stock markets and improving financial systems uh, through technology. Uh, the BIS is warning aligns with the concerns of the Bank of Korea. Recently, the Bank of Korea has been focused on the risks posed by rising housing prices and household uh, debt uh, in its policies as well. All right, and with that, I move on to our final keyword of the day. Trump versus Harris. So former President of the United States Donald Trump and the current VP Kamala Harris have faced off in a crucial TV debate that covered foreign policy, immigration, abortion and other hot button issues. It was a very heated event with many attacks being made. Uh, Kamala Harris did seem more presidential. That seems like the general consensus. But did either candidates get their policies across? Clearly, it was not enough time for that. So maybe we can go through some of the highlights. Yeah, so basically it was kind of like a 100 minutes uh, or 90 to 100 minutes yeah. mudslinging session and uh, about uh, bet uh, between these two uh, candidates who have actually been meeting for the first time. It's their first encounter. Whether we'll see another one, of course, remains to be seen. The Harris camp wants another debate, uh, but not really so much the Republican Party. Now, the debate took place in Pennsylvania, a key swing state, with the first question focusing on the economy and inflation. Of course, top concerns for voters. Harris positioned herself as the candidate for the middle class. Uh, she criticized Trump's economic policies as benefiting the wealthy with his uh, tax breaks. Uh, Trump said the U.S. economy struggled due to foreign countries like China stealing from the U.S., he said. He also claimed that inflation wasn't an issue during his presidency and that it's at record highs under the Biden-Harris administration. Harris highlighted her work to mediate between uh, Israel and Hamas and pushed for a two-state solution for Israel and Palestine. Trump accused her of being anti-Israel and warned that Israel's existence could be at risk if she became president. Uh, Harris countered by accusing Trump of admiring dictators, pointing to his friendly exchanges with Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin, and she said, Putin would, quote, eat him for lunch. So that was kind of one of the uh, one of the many viral moments of the debate. Uh, Trump hit back, accusing Harris of being incompetent. Harris also said that having traveled around the world as vice president, she saw world leaders laughing at Trump uh, when asked about the war in Ukraine. Trump said that if he had been president, the war would never have happened and that if re-elected, he would try to get it settled even before he becomes president. Uh, Harris argued that under Trump, Putin would have already taken Kyiv. Now, on abortion, another hot-button issue that seemed to be taking a lot of the headlines, uh, Trump praised the decision to overturn Roe versus Wade, saying it allowed states to make their own choices. Uh, Harris promised to protect abortion rights at the federal level if elected, she also took aim, saying the government and Donald Trump certainly should not be telling a woman uh, what to do with her body. Uh, on immigration, Trump criticized the current administration for allowing millions of illegal immigrants into the country. Um, and Harris accused him of avoiding real solutions to this uh, to the issue. There was this whole another viral moment where Trump uh, commented on the fact that uh, Haitian immigrants were eating uh, pets in Springfield, Ohio, something that was uh, eventually debunked, debunked uh, on the went spot back by to the, the moderators. Right. Yeah, and uh, so uh, that was basically a comment that was made by J.D. Vance, uh, citing some sort of media reports, uh, online reports, before the actual debate uh, took place. And uh, Donald Trump was basically echoing those uh, comments and remarks uh, and reports uh, on the debate stage. 
Now, throughout the debate, of course, Harris sought to revoke Trump, uh, who occasionally raised his voice in response. So she was trying to, you know, get under Trump's skin. And to some degree, she was uh, successful. In, she was successful in the eyes of a lot of mm. pundits mm. Uh, and uh, watchers of the debate. Uh, Trump did seem a bit defensive and reactive rather than being on the offensive that he is often shown in previous uh, debates. So the overall kind of consensus, and if you look at some of the panel discussions that happened after uh, the debate, uh, a lot of people were basically saying that Trump uh, was a bit underprepared uh, this time, while uh, Kamala Harris was coming in all guns blazing and basically had um, uh, crosshairs basically set on Trump and trying to, you know, provoke uh, or trying to get uh, his temper going. So, um, yeah, some basically assess that she succeeded. Uh, of course, each uh, party are basically going to be touting their success along party lines. Right. Uh, but we'll have to see if a second debate comes out. But um, yeah, the the one uh, on Tuesday, uh, Eastern Time, uh, didn't really go in the favour of Donald Trump, is the, what uh, the most uh, the consensus is at the moment. All right. Uh, we're about 50 days away into the American presidential election. Is that enough time for there to be another debate? Historically, there hasn't been, but circumstances are different, right? As Biden dropped out of the race mm-hmm. historically last minute, uh, we'll wait and see. But we couldn't cover it in hour if we wanted to. Uh, we'll leave it there for now. <laughs> yeah, we're certainly lacking a bit of time to go into this. It's a big topic, yeah. But those were the big takeaways from the TV debate. Thank you so much, Adam, for today's coverage. We'll speak to you again tomorrow. You're very welcome. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.